Colour grading isn't something I've ever really spent much time thinking about with my photography. I tend to generally try and go for realistic colours, but I appreciate that there are you know, cinematographers and quite a few photographers who like the idea of colour grading an image. So I thought, let's do a video about that. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 93 of Understanding Dark Table. Before I get started, I do just very quickly want to say thank you to Bernie M, who alerted me to the existence of a little app for Linux called Gromit. And it's, well, basically it stands for Graphics Over Miscellaneous Things. And what it allows you to do is change your cursor. I've currently got my Wacom stylus and tablet here. So I've got my regular cursor, but I can hit F9 and now I can draw stuff on screen. So I want to alert your attention to something like that and I can do that. And I think that's really cool. I just have to remember all of the keyboard shortcuts to clear it. Shift F9. There we go. <laughs> so Bernie, thank you, mate. That's going to come in handy. I am sure it's to the best of my knowledge, Linux only. But I'm sure there are probably similar apps on Windows and Mac if you ever needed something like that. But I thought, yeah, with the type of stuff that I do, I occasionally would love to be able to just draw things to explain them. So, yeah, hopefully that'll come in handy. Okay, a couple of weeks ago, I got an email and it was an email that was forwarded from pixels.us uh, from the forum saying that a person who goes by the handle VBS had tagged me in a comment of his and he said, the video is absolutely phenomenal. Not sure what is the easiest way to achieve this in Darktable. Lightroom has these sliders for greens, oranges, blues, etc. I tried color zones and the color lookup table, but have limited success when I target specific hues. I'm curious if Bruce Williams can do some video specifically for color grading. Sorry, Bruce, for putting you on the spot, but I like your videos. Well, VBS, no dramas, matey. I will see what I can do. So with that in mind, oh, by the way, the video that he's referring to, I will put in the uh, description down below. It is... Uh, this video right here, Joanna Kustra, Photography Colour. It's just over an hour and a quarter, as you can see. So it's a, a bit of an investment in time, but it is a really good video. I enjoyed it a lot. And it got me thinking about some things that I've not thought about in the past with regards colour in my images. Like I said, I've never been one for color grading. I've always sort of gone, well, I want white balance to be as accurate as possible. But this has got me thinking. So I highly recommend going and watching that video, spend the time to uh, absorb all of that. And VBS mentioned using color zones and the color lookup table. Now I've used the color zones module a lot in my time with dark table the color lookup table not so much not my thing probably because i just haven't spent enough time with it to come to understand it properly but i was kicking around an idea whilst i was thinking about how i could take you know this this request from vbs to make a video about this what i could do and a week and a half ago, I went out and shot with a model, uh, Kate, who I've shot with once before. And oh, seriously, this is like the first time I've gone out and shot portraiture for, oh man, well over 12 months. And it was good. It was good to pick up the camera and get out and, and do something like this again. And one of the images, I'm just going to pick this one here, not for any particular reason other than this is what I was practicing on just before I started recording. Now, what you are seeing right there is, if I'm not mistaken, 
yeah, the completely reset image. The only thing that's being applied to this image would be Filmic RGB. So if we turned Filmic off, that there is pretty much straight out of camera. And as you can probably tell, I had a softbox off to camera right, uh, and I had a half CTO gel on it. Some people say convert to orange. Some people say color temperature orange. Whichever way you want to go, I don't care. It's the same thing. It's a, an orange gel, uh, which basically then takes your, you know, essentially daylight balanced flash, you know, which is emitting white light at somewhere between 5200 and 5600 Kelvin. And by putting that orange gel over it, you now have a light source that is orange rather than white. Why did I do that? Because I wanted to warm her up a little bit and allow that part of the image to be a little bit warmer than the background. And yes, it was a bit of an overcast day in Sydney on the day that we shot. So it made sense to let the background be a little bit cooler. Now, straight out of camera, that's not an awful shot. I mean, obviously it needs some contrast and whatever, but, you know, and obviously we could paint away the, the fly away hairs and whatnot if we were really hoping to do something magnificent with this image. But for a straight out of image capture, I think it's a pretty decent image. So having watched Joanna's video, she talks a lot about things like analogous colors, and complementary colors. And I don't want to go too deep into the weeds because I probably wouldn't do as good a job describing it as she did. So please go and watch the video. It is really worth the hour and a quarter of your time to do so. Analogous colors. Let me just pull up a color wheel here. Just going to drag this out of my browser and over to this monitor here. So let's say we've got this color wheel. Okay. Analogous colors, and here I am going to use Bernie's little tool. If I had a primary color in the, in the image that was, say, in that orange range, then analogous colors would be something like the red of her lips and the green of her jumper. Okay, just to remind you what the image looks like. As you can see, we've got some red here in her lips. We've got some you know, orangish skin tones, and we've got the green of the jumper and also some green in the background. Okay, so they are essentially analogous colors. The idea of complementary colors is that you want to work with colors that are on the other side of the color wheel from whatever color it is that you, you want to have a complementary color of. Now, in her video, she talks about having images where you just have analogous colors. And so you end up with a very consistent color palette that to my aesthetic, it feels a bit dull. It feels like all the colors are the same. It, it's not the case, but that's just the way I perceive it. So I tend to think, you know, complementary colors give the eye something to bounce off. You know, there's there's something here and there's something there. It, it, it sort of balances a little more, to my way of thinking anyway. So with that in mind, clear screen, shift F9. <laughs> I will eventually learn these keyboard shortcuts, Bernie, don't worry. So with that in mind, we would be looking for some blues. Okay, if our skin tones are over here in the oranges, we would be looking for some blues to complement that. Now, like I said, it was an overcast day and because I used a CTO gel on her to warm her up, if I correct for that gel, I'm naturally gonna cool the image down anyway. If we're going to do the complementary colors thing, I probably don't need to cool her down. I can be happy with the orange light that's falling on her skin. So with that in mind, 
I am going to put Filmic RGB back on. And I haven't tweaked those settings either. That is just Filmic RGB doing its thing. I probably could expand that exposure a little bit and maybe just shift the black point a touch. And we've gone from there to there. And I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not gonna do anything more to it other than that for contrast. All right, so in terms of color, VBS talked about color zones and the color lookup table module. I'm actually going to go for something different. And this might seem a little weird, but I'm going to go the colorize module. Now, remember, what I want to do is introduce a blue that is opposite where her skin tones are. Now, her skin tones are sort of over here in this middle orange. I don't know if all of these... They probably all have unique names, but I don't know them. So I'm just going to say this middle orange here. So we want to be over here in something that's a little bit darker than cyan. It's sort of pretty much in the middle of the blues, right? What I'm going to do is go up there to there. Okay, that's turned the module on and it's given us a blue cast to the entire image. What I want to do now is paint in a mask so that we are only affecting the background. So what I will do is I will start with a paintbrush and I'm gonna use my shift key to feather this quite, uh, not, not too much, but about there. And I'm gonna leave the brush fairly small because what I wanna do is track around the edge of Kate as best as I can. And for that, I'm gonna use my Wacom tablet. Why not? I've got it in my hand. I've got the stylus in my hand. So let's just give that a go and see how I go. So I'm just going to paint around like so. And a bit wobbly. Man, I am so out of practice with this thing. Okay, so we've at least got a, a rough path there. And what I can do is just go and grab the odd node here and there and just bring that in a little closer to her hair. And there was a bit where I went a bit too close to her. So I'm just going to remove a node or two in there and just open that up a little bit. Okay. So now I've basically got something reasonably close to Kate. Now I just need to fill in the rest of the image. So I would do a second path. I'm gonna make it much bigger. I am gonna hold my shift key and give it a hard edge. And now, and then one Final brush stroke, which will be a bit smaller, and that will allow us to just fill in that section over there. Okay, so now if I turn all those paths off, we can see that I've got this very intense blue. Don't worry, we're not leaving it like this. But we've essentially painted our blue across all of the background of the image and left Kate out of it, which is what I was after. Now I could add a little bit of feathering just to help soften these edges around her hair. So I might just do that and that will help ease the transition between Kate and the background. I could probably go in and finesse that path there just a little bit like that. And that's pretty reasonable. I could obviously spend more time finessing it more, but you get the idea. Okay, so now what I want to do is reduce the saturation because that blue is just way too much. If I take it all the way out, then what we've got is the colorize module doing its thing, but not actually adding any color. It's reduced the saturation of everything that was underneath. We want a little bit of blue probably somewhere like that. And what I'm going to do now is use a blending mode. I'm gonna swap this over to lab color. 
And now I really have got this, what is to my mind, a bit of a color graded look where I have made the entire background blue, which is complementary to the orange of her skin. And I feel like, yeah, that really works. It feels like we've got these contrasting colors or these complementary colors with the blue and the orange. And it really does make her jump out of the image more than she did before. And I could, you know, then go and muck around with the lightness if I wanted to, but I really don't think we need to. I think it's fine at 50%. Saturation, again, you could back it off more if you wanted, or you could increase it more if you really wanted to up the, the contrast between the colors. For me, I'm thinking somewhere about 0.25 is okay. You could also back off the opacity if you felt that it was just too strong an effect. So as we bring that back towards zero, we bring all of the original color from the background of the image back into it. And now that I've turned that off, I go, oh, it just really doesn't work without it. It looked better with the, the grade, you know, with those blues accentuated. In fact, it probably doesn't need to go to 100%. I'm thinking, yeah, 75%. I really like that. I really like that. Now, obviously, there will be times where you won't want to draw a mask. You will want to use the parametric controls in order to build up the region that you want to grade for want of a better term. All of the same rules should apply. As long as you understand how to create a parametric mask and how to use the controls to get that mask looking the way you want, you should be fine to follow this idea. And yes, as VBS suggested, you could use the color zones module. You could probably also use the color LUT module, whatever it's called. I can't even remember what it's called now. Uh, you know, there are so many color tools in Darktable. We, we've all seen them. There is a plethora of modules that allow you to modify color in Darktable. You could pretty much use any one of them. You could even use the color correction module uh, to achieve the same sort of end goal. So VBS, I hope that helped you, mate. Uh, thank you for tagging me in that uh thread about that video of Joanna's because it was a really interesting video. I appreciated it a lot and I feel like I've probably forgotten half of it already and I really should give it another watch. Uh, but it's a case of trying to find another hour and a quarter to devote to that because there's so much other stuff to watch as well. <laughs> but um, yeah, I like it. I like that idea of using complementary colors. It, it, it Certainly in this instance, I really feel like it works, you know. And to be honest, I, I don't think I'd do a whole lot more with that image. Uh, this is one image where I would not crop it into a 16 by 9 format simply because I composed in such a way that I used the entirety of the frame you know, to crop this into 16.9, I could really only crop from the bottom up. And I feel like that would take too much of Kate out of the image. And importantly, it would also remove a lot of the green content from the image. So I don't think that would work just to explore that concept. If I was to go 16.9, yeah, see, I don't want to chop off the top of the Harbour Bridge. So that would mean I'd have to go to there and yeah, it's borderline. You could maybe get away with that, but no, 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 no. Cuts off too much. Don't like it. So I would, in this instance, leave it in that uh, format, that aspect ratio. I don't think I need to do anything more with the contrast of the image. I don't think I really need to worry about sharpening. I would probably go and apply a bit of softening to her skin. Uh, and I have 
covered that in the video that I did on the soften module because uh, that does a really nice job of softening the skin if you use it the way well the way I use it it does a nice job of softening the skin yeah, I don't think I really need to do anything more with that image do you know what I'm going to apply some softening not in this video but I am going to do it after I finish recording and I'm going to chuck this up on my Instagram because I really like the way this has come up so yeah there we go uh patrons I'm going to do a Bruce edits for you guys and something a little bit different whilst Kate and I were out shooting I got really adventurous uh, I have down here on the floor uh, this set of cheap uh, filters these it was not these filters that I used for this particular image uh, but I have in this cheap set I will get them out for you so you can have a look and this was just something I picked up off eBay and they're like five bucks for the set so it comes in all of these different colors purples and sort of a strong magenta or a yellow blah 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 and then somewhere down here there is this one here which is called turquoise blue for obvious reasons but to me that just looks like cyan uh, and so what i did as a bit of an experiment i put that cyan filter on the flash i didn't spend time whilst shooting trying to work out sorry i shouldn't be crinkling plastic while i'm talking i didn't waste any time whilst i was shooting trying to work out what white balance i should shoot at to compensate for the strong blue cast to the light source i just allowed it to go where it wanted to go but with the idea that in post-production i would then tweak the white balance in such a way as to shift that cyan light source back towards a daylight white balance and that would make everything in the background go you know what it is right i don't need to tell you so i will use one of those images for the next bruce edits so uh patrons keep an eye out for that all right guys questions comments feedback please sing out down below as per normal and i will talk to you in the next one